Hi guys! Soon after Surviving the Deathloop episode was released, I received so many questions about it, having several discussions on the forums, so I've decided to release another short episode to answer the most popular requests. First of all, I want to emphasize again that techniques described in the first episode are recommended for those cases when one of your lines wraps around the harness hook or your safety system has a critical failure or blocked somehow, so you don't have any other options. If you are still able to release the kite completely, do it if the situation is getting serious. Now, let's start with our questions. First, about the kite knife. A lot of guys have told me something like, forget about grabbing your lines, just cut them all away. I'd like to remind you that kite knives were designed mostly to cut a clear line wrapped around your limb like this. That's why they have a narrow mouth, like the one I have, and often not able to cut something really thick. Now, take a look at this. Let's say you have a nurse bar and it has tangled around your harness. So, what are you planning to cut here? The steering line itself is located partly inside of a foamy float, partly inside of a plastic tube, which gets stuck inside of a knife's mouth. The main depower rope is pressed to the bar really hard and even if you are able to find a clear section to cut, by the way two ropes, you may find it impossible because the rope is still quite thick for an average kite line knife. I am trying to cut a 4mm pure Dyneema rope here, the same one they usually use for main depower line. It hardly goes through the knife's mouth and it's not that easy at all. Don't forget that sometimes the rope also has a plastic covering on some bars like ozone or cabrina. Cutting the clear section of a steering line would be a perfect solution, but it's really far away even for my long arms. Would you be able to reach out there in a death loop rush? You see that there's not much to cut here actually. So think twice before relying on your kite knife completely. Another really popular comment was like, Anton, you are filming the death loop example in pretty light wind conditions with quite a big 8 meter kite. Do we have enough power to pull the line if the wind is really strong and we have a small and fast kite, like 6 meter? I've promised to film an example at around 35 plus knots conditions with a small kite and here it is. 6 meter bandit, which is powerful and fast enough. I'd like to thank my friends for sharing this kite for educational purposes. We've chosen the most windy day during this winter on Philippines and we've measured from 35 to 42 knots that day. Unfortunately, we didn't have too much of such strong wind days to make more cuts, so I'm sorry for low footage quality at some point. You can see that the kite loop is really fast and powerful. A perfect day for a couple of death loops to happen. Ok. We are set and go. Grabbing the line and it stalls. However, Bandit tends to turn inside out during this process, nevertheless it stops. Talking about the power needed to pull the line, I haven't felt any difference between this case and the 8 meter in light wind conditions. So, even in these conditions, the kite stalls and the death looping stops. I didn't have time to fix the bar on the hook, since it all happened really quick and was holding the bar like this by hand. But it feels pretty much the same as with the fixed line. After the death loop stops, you have an ability to flag the kite using one of your lines or to pull the safety line out of the mess and use it to depower the kite or at least to untangle the steering line from your harness to be able to throw the kite away completely, which seems to be the safest option for a beginner. Just don't release the line you are holding to stall the kite too early, otherwise you can reinitiate the loop. Note that the speed you fly over the water in these conditions is dramatically high, so again, ask yourself, would you be able to find the kite knife in your harness and to find a clear line to cut? before you hit an obstacle or go too far out into the sea. One more question I get pretty often is about the possibility of death loop 
in case if one of the lines snaps. To check it, I took my 10 meter slingshot rally and went out when it was blowing about 20 knots, pretty well powered. Let's start from the steering line. Done. After drawing a wide arc, the kite falls down. I didn't feel anything special, no tendency to loop. Now one of the front lines. Here we go. Oh yeah, this time something like a death loop. It spins really fast, however without any power. After a while it just falls into the water by itself. I'm using the remaining line to flag the kite completely. Our experiment has shown that line snapping is not able to initiate a death loop, at least not that powerful and dangerous in case of rally. If you have other experience, let me know. As a little bonus, you have a chance to see what happens if both front lines snap. Here it is. The kite loses the shape and the power completely and falls down. As you can see, instead of cutting a temporary insert, I sliced both lines, including the real one. That's the thing that can make you cry. One more thing to mention. You significantly increase the possibility of death loop situation on the water when riding and jumping with weak lines. From my teaching experience, Landing after a jump when you haven't created enough line tension on takeoff sometimes leads to this. When you hit the surface when the kite is still descending, lines get critically loosened, the kite goes unstable, tangling the lines while falling down, or your loosened lines can wrap around the harness, possibly initiating a death loop. Improving your edging techniques is the only way to avoid it. Check out my new video featuring a real innovative approach to dealing with line tension and board edging, focusing on things you might never think about while learning jumps. Learn how to keep your lines tensioned all the time to improve your efficiency and safety. Alright guys, as always, I wish that you'd never need those skills we are discussing here in the Deathloop series. And don't forget to share this video to spread the word of safer riding. Take care! and see you in the next episodes.